Hello everybody, welcome to part eight. I'm gonna make this the final part. I don't know how long it will be. You know, because you've seen it, I've uploaded it now, but this is what we've got left so far. In there, you see the bubble wrap at the bottom now. So we're getting there. So I'm gonna finish them off in this video. So let's grab a handful and get going. Oh, still feels like there's a lot in there though. Okay, we start with 1937. A couple of varieties to look for, but I don't bother with the 1937 because they're both quite common. 1934, go to Matt's Coins if you want to see that one. 1939, uh, there's a 1919, no mint mark on it. 1895, you're looking for the big gap between the Trident and the P, and I can tell that is a small gap. So that's a common one. Uh, oh, there's an Irish one. 1933 Irish penny. Well, I found a 1933. Where is it? Found a 1933 jersey in the last hunt. Now all we need is 1933, a British one. Be very nice. Uh, not going to happen though, is it? 1881. That's got to be, hasn't it? But that's pretty bad. Oh, that's terrible, in fact. Uh, 1940, let's have a look at that Exerg line. I think that is a single line above the date, uh, the scarcer one of the two. There we go, the one that was down on the board, it's got the double line. You can see two lines above the date, and the one I've just found is a single line. Slightly harder to find. So that can go down on the board, and I'll finish this handful. Uh, 1962. Uh, there's an 1899 Victoria, 1931 King George V, and there's King Edward VII, 1906, 64 Elizabeth, there's a, look at the shape of that, someone's used that to prise something open probably, 1937, there's a halfpenny, 1965, Nice. There's a 1911, looking for the Gobi X, which is known as the hollow neck penny, where in the 1911 the king looks like he's got a hollow in the back of his neck. I haven't showed that recently, have I? Let me go and get one and show you. There we go, there's one, and you can see that hollow in the back of the king's head, or back of his neck, I should say, just there. There are other things to look for. Uh, if you go to the description of this video, have you got a rare 1911 penny? And I explain it in that, but that's one. And if you find one in that condition, probably about £50 now. Probably more, because that's quite a nice one. But that one, that's just a common one. There's a 1917. You see that has got a hollow neck. People have asked me, oh, they've found certain dates with a hollow neck, but it only applies to 1911 not any other date. There's a 1919. No mint mark. Is that dirty enough for the dirty mug? All right, that's a 1917 as well. I think it is. Let me show you the dirty mug. There's my Macamula mug. If you haven't subscribed to Macamula, the link is in the description. And what I do, I put all my dirty coins in there when I find them. I don't like cleaning coins, but some people love it. So I'll do a separate video soon when that's full, and then I'll give all this lot away. One left in this handful, 1946. No little dot after the E. And Matt from Matt's Coins did find one recently. Very jealous on about that. I am prioritising my Whitman albums as we search through these coins, but I don't think anything in that first handful um, goes in there. So I've got these for the board. I've got the 1940 with the single Exerg line. So that can go there. Two of those. I've got a halfpenny, which can go over there. I've got uh, Irish 1933, which can go there. And the 1881, terrible condition, but it does fill that space. And next. Can you hear them pigeons? 
Right, 1940. Is that a double line? No, I think that's another single line. Yeah, it is slightly harder to find. But I've, oh, I've dropped it. Right. Edward VII, 1910. That's a dirty one. 1903. And it's not an open three, so it's a common one. Oh, look, what's that in the middle there? Someone's had a go. I don't know what they tried to do. Interesting. I might clean that up and see if I can get anything out of it. Right. 1931. Ooh, that's another farthing. 1940 this time. Don't think we've got a 1940 yet. Uh, 1948. Edward with the seventh. 1905. The Edward the Seventh, 1907 this time. There's George V, 1927. There's an old Victoria, 1875. Now that's a wide date. The one I found for my book was that a narrow date? Let me go and get it out. Yeah, that's the one on top that I found earlier, which I put in my album. A narrow date. Now that top one would be what isn't Freeman's call reverse H and the bottom one reverse J both of them relatively easy to find there's lots of different varieties the 1875 but you can't really tell unless you've got your coins in a really nice condition but the two um, dates are easy to see obviously look all right so that one wide date I'll put down on the board and I've got through these 1938 62. Ed with the seventh, the 1908. 1905. 1949. One of the uh, lower minted, the George the Sixth, but there's four, I think, they found in this box. There's a 1919, and you can see there is no mint mark on that one. 1902, that's a high tide. So that's a common one. Oh, look at that. An Irish halfpenny. 1953. That's a Sound Pigs by Percy Metcalf. And you can see his initials there. PM, Percy Metcalf. I like that design. That's a cracker, that one. Part of the giveaway, though. Uh, 62. And last one in this handful. Uh, another 62. Okay, the Irish halfpenny. What did I say it was? 1953. It can go down there. Another different one. And the 1875 with the wide date can go there. Okay, I have to grab two more. Ooh, I think I felt a farthing then. I think I felt a farthing. Right. 1919. But no mint mark. Okay, 1946. Have we got a little dash up there? No. No, sadly not. Uh, 1964. 1931. King George V. And that looks like could be another jersey. Oh no, it's Australia. 1936 Australia. Of course, I think. Are they identical designs? Let's have a look. Let's grab that last. Uh, oh, grab it one handed. There it is. I've never studied those um, verses, those portraits. Are they absolutely identical? I think they could be. I think they are, yeah. Anybody know whether there's any slight differences between the of versus Australia and Jersey? I don't think there is. Oh, let me know on that one. Let me put this uh, checking our Jersey one back there. 
So we'll have a look at the uh, reverse of this. Commonwealth of Australia, one penny, 1936. Not bad condition either, is it? Lovely. 1940, and that has got a double line. Yeah, clearly see the double line there. Uh, 1939, there's George VI, 1944. Edward VII, 1907. There's a 1919, but no mint mark on that, I don't think. Nope. There's Victoria. Oh, look at that. 1900. That's a beauty. Dirty around there. Oh, it's not corrosion, is it? It's one thing I like on a coin. It's a nice clear date. But I've got a feeling that might be corrosion. Okay, let's get me a little wooden stick. I think that's a bit of corrosion around that one. Uh, I can't complain too much, can I? Look at that. That is really nice condition. That's an upgrade for me. Very nice. Uh, 1897. Is there a dot there? Nah. A bit worn anyway. There's 1927. Well, there's the farthing. I thought I felt a farthing come out. Uh, 48. I think we've got a nice 48 though. A nice shiny one, didn't I? Uh, there's another 1900. Look at the difference there. That uh, is not so good. 1920. Uh, there's a 1901. Uh, oh, look at that. 1919H. That is the third one, I think, in this box. Is it three? Yeah, it must be three. Get it as close as I can to the camera. That's not bad, is it? Very nice. I'll check that. I'll see if it's better than the one on the board. Uh, there's a grubby one. And there's a 1936. Okay, got the 1936 Australian to go with the other Australian ones. Uh, I've got this far then 1948, but there's a better one anyway. Of that date. That 1900 is definitely an upgrade. Put it up there. And I will check on that corrosion, see whether it's corrosion or just dirt at a later date. Right in there. I nearly forgot that 1940 far then. And this 1919H is going to replace that one. Because if you remember in an earlier hunt, I found that and it had a mark on it. So that will replace that one. Oh God, have too many there. All right. 1965. Another Elizabeth, 61. That's a 19 of 14, George V. 1932, there's Victoria. 1890, uh, we have better 1890s than that. 62, there's a 1916, not the recessed ear type, but what's that down there? Not sure what that is. Could it be just damage? Because it looks like it comes up on this edge as well. Not sure. It looks like something could have got between the die and the blank when it was minted. A little flake of something. Very interesting. It looks to me like that was done in the minting process. I'll put that to one side, uh, have a study of that later. 
Okay, there's a 1922. Have we got a middle prong of the Trident? Not touching the bead. No, we haven't. It's a common one. Uh, there is 1966. There's Edward VII. 1909. Come on, let's have a little dot after the N. No, not on that one. 1948. George VI. Uh, 1935. There's a Victoria. And it's again a very worn 1896. Another Victoria. That's a 1900. That's not great either, is it? There's a 1913, a little bit battered, Ooh, very battered. I find quite a few pennies with that marking on them. It's like they've been squashed in something. Well, whatever it was, it was a long time ago. 1905. Uh, there's a 1926. I'm looking for the modified effigy of the 1926, where the colon of the GRA and the Brit, the colon in the middle. It's pretty central. It's pretty central there. In the modified effigy, it's almost touching the A and there's a clear gap between the colon and the B. So that one is a common one. There we go, 1961. 1898. That's a little bit better. Could be, I'll have a look in a minute. There's Victoria. 1894. Now I know I need one for the board. I can't remember if I've got one in the album yet though. So that's another one to check. There's an Elizabeth 62. Two left in this handful. 1921. And another worn looking 1918 with no mint mark on it. Okay, don't need this uh, 1894 for the album. Already got it. So that can go there. And that's another full bingo line. And the 1898 down there, a little bit of damage on the side there, so this one is a bit better. I'll upgrade that. There's the 1916 under the microscope. I don't really think you're gaining much more information there, though. Could be a little crack up there. I still think something has got between the planchet, the flan, or the blank, whatever you call it, before it was struck. Now, I can feel that. You can only see it in two dimensions, but I can feel it. Massive part of coin collecting, I think, is the feel of the coin. Some people tell me I should wear gloves while I'm handling coins. I tell you what, that ain't gonna happen. These coins have been handled for decades, sometimes even centuries. So me, giving it one little fondle is certainly not gonna do it any harm. Right, I'm off on a tangent now. I've gotta go and get something. Now this is the Alexander Graham Bell two pound coin commemorating 100 years since the death of the telephone pioneer. Most people who own this coin won't know what it feels like, and I can tell you that feels fantastic. And the edges, oh, like razor blades, are so sharp. Absolutely lovely. And the edge inscription that most people who own this coin won't even be able to see says, Innovation in Science, Bell. And don't put your coins in flips. If you invited me round your house and you'd got coins in flips, well, you weren't looking, I'd just rip them all out. I know you'd have me arrested, but it just have to be done. Anyway, I'm waffling too much. This video is going to be long enough as it is. Putting a coin in a flip is like putting a bear in a cage. It should be illegal. <laughs> so many people disagree with me, I know. Right. Edward the Seventh. He's got a few pot marks on his head there. Quite a clear signature on this one. DES for De Sauls, William De Sauls, the designer. And that is 1910. So we've got 1934. There's another Edward. 1902. As you can see, that's a high tide. A high tide level. That's a common one. 1937. Uh, there's a 1919, but no mint mark on there. Or well, someone wanted to know the figures of the mint marks. I'll put it on the screen now and you can make a screenshot. There we are. And you can see the 1919 with the H mint mark. Not particularly rare. All right, carry on. 1964. 
There's a 1909. Have we got that tiny little dot after the top of the N? Nope. Uh, 1914. There's an Irish one. 1928. 1928 Irish penny. 1928 was that the first? I think that was the first of the national coinage for Ireland, wasn't it? Someone will be able to tell me that. I think it was 1928. I think before that they used the British coins. Am I right on that one? A little bit of damage there, but too bad. Don't think I've found a 1928 Irish before. Uh, there's 1907. 1902, but you can see straight away that is a high tide. High tide. Uh, 1963. There is a shiny 66. Got a 1920. Not the rare type. Uh, there's a 1905. Edward the Seventh again. Uh, 1929. Oh, there's a jersey. 1066 to 1966. Not finding quite as many jerseys in this hunt as I have in others. That's to commemorate 900 years since the Battle of Hastings. Bad condition that one. Uh, 1917 there. Uh, 1906. Bit of corrosion on that one. There's a halfpenny. 1949. Jewels the six. Another jewels the six. Penny. 1939. Last one in this handful. 1909. Has it got a little dot after the N? No, it hasn't. So there's another halfpenny, 1946. We've got the Jersey one from 1966 and the Irish one from 1928. I do at last have a PO box, there it is. If you want to send me anything, letter, postcard, anything like that. Uh, if you want to send me a coin and you want that coin back, please include a stamped addressed envelope or a jiffy bag and I'll get it sent back to you. Whatever I get, I will try and feature in a video at some time. And I'll put that in the description address as well. Thank you. Okay. 1944. Yep. 1944. Victoria. 1898. There's a 1913. George V. 1945, there's a jersey, liberated, oh that's an Elizabeth one, slightly more scarcer they are, 1945, wouldn't have been minted obviously in 1945 with Elizabeth II on it, well, that would have been minted in 1954 to commemorate the liberation of Jersey in the Second World War, at the end of the Second World War. I think we've got one with Elizabeth on it. I'm sure I found one with uh, George on it, though. There's a 1935. There's a 1916. I think that's a bit of damage around the King's Eye. don't think it's anything to do with minting. It's a bit odd, doesn't it? Yeah, you can see some damage through the other side. Uh, right, 1915. You can get a recessed ear in 1915. They're much harder to find. And that's not one. Right, 1946. Have we got a dash on this one up there? No, there's a mark up the top there. It's not in the right place. There's a 1920. Not the rare type. I've got a video. Have you got a rare 1920 penny? Oh, it's an ultra rare, actually, if you can find one. The link to that will be below in the description. Uh, what was that? Did I even say what that was? 1934. 1937. Uh, there's another 1920. It's not a rare one, but what's that? You can see the streaks where the alloy hasn't mixed properly. That's quite common in the um, 1920 and 21 pennies. Well, you can't see it on that side very well. There's a crack. It looks like a, some kind of crack there, doesn't it? That's uh, 
not mixing properly, the alloy not mixing properly caused that. Bad blank. Ah. Uh, it's another one to study at a later date, I think. Uh, 1930. It's not bad. That might be a little bit of an upgrade to the one on the board. Uh, 1939. 1918. No mint mark on that one. Uh, what we got here? 1962. Last one in this handful. 1916. It's uh, a common one. Okay, there's the jersey one, and I think. Yeah, there it is. Oh, good. Uh, let's have a look at those. I think the reverse are identical. I think they are. One is King George the Sixth, and one is Elizabeth the Second. I think the George the Sixth ones were minted in 1949. 1951 and 1952 and that one as I said 1954 but I'm pretty sure the reverses are identical I have studied them in the past and I can't see any difference well that's one of each now for the giveaway so I will put them on the other jersey ones Tidy them up there. and this one with a crack in it I'll put to one side and have a look at that some other time still a lot to get through in this video Oh, still loads in there. I think I should have split this up into two videos. Two more videos instead of making this the last one. Right, I'm committed now though. 1917. Uh, there's a Victoria. 1863. Oh, come on. Let's have a die mark down there somewhere. Oh, there's a mark. Just where we need to see, but uh, that's going to be impossible there. See if there's like a die number there. It would be worth a fortune if there was, but we'll never know. don't think so. There's a 1915. A big gash out of the king's neck there under his chin, but it's just damage. Edward VII, 1910. 1889. I don't think we've got an 1889. We haven't got one on the board, I can see, but I found one for the book. I'll check that. There's a 1908, there's a George VI, 1940, has it got a double or a single line? That's a double exerg line, double line above the date, so that's a common one, and there's a hole there, look. Come through the other side, no. More holes. Somebody's been making holes in that coin. Either that or it's a bronze worm or something. <laughs> ah, another Victoria. 1873. 1873. I don't remember finding an 1873. Terrible condition, but again, I'll check that in a minute. Uh, 1937. There's a 1912, and you can see that has got an H mint mark. Yep, clearly got an H mint mark, but we do have. 1892, got that, I'll check to see if it's an upgrade though, uh, 1917, 28, there's an Elizabeth, 1961, 1905, Edward VII, slipping out my hand, uh, there's a 1915, and uh, no, that's one, oh that might be I'm going to put that in the dirty mug. There we go. Oh, I didn't take the others out though, did I? So it didn't make that lovely noise. 1917. 1908. 1936. There's a 1907. Oh, that might be a bit better. Notoriously bad, 1907s. Check that one. 1921. Uh, 1936, I think that's just a bit of deliberate damage on there. 
Someone's been thumping it with something. There we go. That's all that is. Uh, what have we got here? 1964 and 1913. The 1889, I do still want one for the album, so that can go in there. 12 and a half million of that one minted. All I need to complete this album, the 1881 to 1901, is the 1883 there. Everything else we've got. And in the 1860 to 1880 album, I do need this 1873. It's another one. And there's a few upgrades to the board. The 1863 is slightly better. This um, 1892 that is uh, slightly better as well. And the 1907, this one is definitely an upgrade. Much better. Must be getting that out. few in there. It's eight, mate. Edward the seventh. Nineteen oh three halfpenny there from Edward the seventh. Right, nineteen sixty four. Thirty seven. And the nineteen thirteen, pretty worn though. Found a nice nineteen thirteen earlier on. There's a 1918, but as you can see, clearly no mint mark there. Uh, 1948. Oh, oh, it's another Australian. One half penny. 1921. So it's a bit of had a bit of a shine up there at some time though. Someone from Australia did say that. Before decimalisation, I think that was 1966, they did pronounce that halfpenny, same as Britain. One halfpenny. Not bad though, 1921, is it? A shame about a little bit of polishing on that side. But that's nice. Have found a, not an Australian halfpenny before though. Can't remember the date. 36. That's a 1913, that's a little bit better condition. Uh, 1900. Nineteen forty-six. Is that just dirt? I think it is. Uh, there's no dash there, is there? No. Nineteen oh four. Nineteen twenty-eight. Nineteen hundred again. Not brilliant. Eighteen ninety-seven. Oh, let's see it. Oh, I don't think it is, is it? It looked like a dot there. Oh. Oh, wait a minute. No, I've given it a bit of a rub with my thumb. It's just a bit of damage. Look, it's not in the right area anyway. Uh. I will find one one day. Uh, all right, 1920. There's another one. Come on, this time. Nope, nothing there. Sixty-four. Sixty-one. That was a shiny one. Oh, 64. Do have a nice 64 though, much better than that. Okay, 1931. 1921. There's Victoria. Oh, look at that. 1881 with an H mint mark. And that is definitely better than what we've got. That's nice. 1889. All right, I'll check that in a minute. Last one. Oh, another Victoria. Another 1889. So that's one for the board, definitely. Okay, there's the 1881 with the H mint mark that I found earlier. Slightly less common than the 1881 without the H mint mark. That's the one I just found. 
I'm going to leave that one in there and put this one as the giveaway. The H and 81, I need a space really for H and 81 with an H mint mark and one without, but I can't tell what that's got on there anyway. So I'll leave that one there and I'll put that one there. That's definitely got an H mint mark. That can go on the giveaway board. Right then, let me tidy some of these up. I'm going all over the place. Look at it. Right, okay, so I've got this. Uh, 1921 halfpenny, Australian halfpenny that can go down there. We've got the George, no, not George, Edward the Seventh. What was that? Can't remember the date now. 1903. That can go with the other halfpennies. And the 1889 is another one for the board. All right, so I'm chipping the box up now. It's <laughs> got a lot left. Okay, 1931, King George V. There's George V again, this time 1920. Uh, there we've got a 1902, and that looks like a high tide. That's a common high tide one. 1890, not too bad. It looks like it's better than the one down there on the board, but I'll check my album first. It's going to be an upgrade for somewhere, that one. Uh, another 1931. 1904. 1920. 1913. 1930. There's another 1912 with an H mint mark. But again, Got a better one than that. There's a 1912. Oh, without a mint mark. Makes a change. Not very good condition though. Uh, so 1891. No, we got a better one than that. Uh, 1965. Uh, 1906. Not too good, that is it. Oh, what's this? 1855, Napoleon III. So that's a French 10 centimes. Been alright if it weren't for that. I found some of these with holes all the way through, but I can't see anything on the other side. Oh, that's nasty, isn't it? Must have been drilled because we'd see some damage on the other side if it was just punched. I can't see anything come through there. Old though, it predates all these pennies, 1855. So that's going to be part of the giveaway, because I don't collect foreign coins. 1906. 1908. 1920. 1936. It's 1907, not as good as the 1907 we just found earlier. There's a 1909, has it got a dot after the N? Be handy if we could actually see the end. <laughs> oh dear, that's terrible. Never going to know, are we? Oh dear. <laughs> There's a. Oh my God, drop that one. It's a halfpenny. That's a bit dirty. Did that want to go in the dirty mug? Is that what jumped out my hand? Go on then. Get in there with them others. Okay, 1966 and 1921. Nah, just a bit of corrosion. Right, that's the Napoleon the third one there. That can go down there with the other French ones. And this 1890 is definitely better than that one. So we'll swap that for another little upgrade. Okay. okay, get in there, we're getting there. 1964. There's Edward VII. So 1903, but is it the open three? 
no as you can see it's curly so that's a closed three that's a common one 1930 and there's a halfpenny George VI 1942 the Golden Hind there the ship it's got a dirty ear roll clean off Oh, and there is a 1918 with an H mint mark. Well, that's not too bad. It might be better than the one on the board. I'll have a look. That's a second one of those. Probably a 1919 H's. Uh, oh, look at that, Australia. 1950. Australian penny. Now, there's no dot after the word penny, so I think that means that's a Melbourne mint. Put me right if I'm wrong on that one. 1950. What was the other Australian? The kangaroo on it. Or oh, two. Found oh, two more. Hang on. Oh, dear. That one was 1951. And that had got a dot on it there. So I think that's Perth. And that's got a dot. So that's Perth. I think I'm getting it the right way around. Put them back. Right. Uh, there's a Victoria. What was that? 1877 got a couple of 1877s but could be slightly better and there's another far then 1939 this time George the six and what's that Victoria 18 what I think it's 1884 was it 1881 no 1884 isn't it yeah look very bad condition, 1884. Let's see if we need that in a minute. There's a shined up, 1897. No dot. As you do, as you know, I don't like polished pennies, so that's going to go in the dirty mug with the others. All right, there's George. There's the Edward the Eight. Oh, another Edward the Seventh. Another 1903. But that is another closed three, common one. 1928, 48, uh, 1899. What's that? I can't tell that's 1873. I can't tell if that's 1873. Is it the top of a two? Is it 1872? Hard to tell, isn't it? It could be two actually. I think it's 1872. Hmm, I think so. Right, 64. Uh, 1921. That's another Victoria. That's a nice one. 1882. And as you can clearly see, the H mint mark on that one. That's nice. I think that's better than the one in the album. I found one earlier. It's definitely better. All right. 1936. 1918. No mint mark on that one. Nope. And what have we got here? 1936. The 1882. That's definitely an upgrade. That was in pretty poor condition. So that's a lovely upgrade for me. There we go. Right, for the board, that 1918 with the H mint mark, that's definitely an improvement there, a bit of an upgrade. The 1877, this one's a little bit better. The 1884, not the best condition, but it fills another space. Now this one, I can't decide if that's a 72 or a 73. But as they're both needed for the board, I'll put that down there, like that, and the winner can study that a bit more. Then over this side we've got the Hapney from 1942 and the Australian from 1950. Okay, that's what's left in the box. Let's get this packaging out of the way. There might even be about three more handfuls in there. Oh, I wish I'd have split this into more videos. Right. Right, 1963, 
There's an 1898, not the best. A decent 1896, that's the one I'd like to find. There's a 1918, don't think that's a mint mark on there. Nope. Alright, 1961. 28. Uh, 1966. 1962. There's a 1922. So we want the middle prong not to be touching one of those teeth, one of those beads. Oh, yes, definitely touching. So that's a common one. There's a Victoria. 1879. Don't think we've got an 1879 on the board. No, I can see there's not, but I'll check my book. 1928 again. There's a 1907. 1914. And another farthing. Quite a few farthings in this lot. I think we've got 1940 though. And the Wren design is by artist Harold Wilson Parker. Quite like that. Right, what we got here then? Uh, 1961, 1938, 1909, looking for that dot up by the N, and certainly not there. 1913, there's a 1907, there's a 1912, has that got an H mint mark on it? I think it has, yeah, and uh, well. Has that been crafted as a tool? No, it's probably just been squashed in something, hasn't it? Yeah, that's all that is. Uh, 1899 again. 1921 and 1964. All I got from that handful was a 1940 farthing, which I think I've got already. And I found an 1879 in an earlier hunt for the Whitman album, so that 1879 can go down there. And that's another space field. Well, hopefully this is going to be the penultimate handful. One more after this, I think. Right. 1935. 1931. Come on, let's have some crackers in the last bits. There's another 1900. Queen Victoria. 1964. 1920. 38. 1919. No mint mark. 1927. 1926, is that the modified effigy? No, you see the colon between the GRA and the Brit is pretty much central. There's a 1915, can get a recessed ear, but that's not. And there's a farthing, oh, George V farthing this time. 1927, that's not bad, is it? Pretty good detail, a little mark in the middle, but that might come off. See Britannia's face quite clearly there. That's a nice one. George V. 1938, George VI. 1937, George VI. 1994, has it got a little mark? Come on. No. A little dot after the E we're looking for. But not that one. There's a 1918 and no mint mark there. Okay, we got a 1939 again. 1913, I can feel a small coin in my hand. 1919, no mint mark. There's a George V again. 1922, that is clearly touching a bead up there. And ooh, another farthing. 1918 this time, another George V farthing. And that's not bad either. There's no mint marks on the um, 1918 farthings, but that's not bad, is it? 
Now this 1935, it's not too brilliant. I'm going to swap it with that one, so I think it's slightly better. And the two farthings from 1918, 1927, and go there. Right, let's get the rest out of the box. I can probably tip them out of my hand, actually. Come on. And that is it. We have an empty box. Get that down there. Tidy these up a bit. Ah, here we go. Come on, let's have some crackers in the last handful. Edward the Seventh. 1907. That's uh, 64. 1946. Very dirty around there, but I don't think there's a dash. Let's give it a good rub. Might come away quite nicely, but we've got no dash there. Shame. Right. There's another one. Okay, we've got 19 of 47, 36, 1919, come on, you could have given us a KN on the last handful. Right. There's another 1919, and no mint mark, 66, 38, there's another farthing. Oh no it's not. It's a Canadian one cent. Maple leaves there. Mm -hmm. So KG must be George Kruger Gray. He must have designed that as well. Didn't know that. So nice. Is that the same size as a farthing? No, it's actually slightly smaller than a farthing. Oh well, something different for the last handful. Right, 1937. 1917. There's another 1919, but sadly, no memory. There's 1915. You're going to be a recessed ear type. No. 1944. There's a Victoria, another 1888, another Jack the Ripper coin. So at least I've got one for the board now. It's about the same condition as the other one, really, I think. Not far off. Oh, another space filler, anyway. 1939. There's a 1927. And that's not a British one. It's another South Africa, 1953 this time, so that's um, Elizabeth. Last one was a George that we found. And that's the Dromedaeus, that ship. Is that an identical to the George? Yeah, I think it is. Oh, it's not, is it? It's got South Africa that side, is that Afrikaans, and this side English, and in this one, George, it's the other way round. South Africa and English that side, and Afrikaans that side. Well, that's something I've learnt, I didn't know that. Nice to learn something new. Alright, the last few now, 1917, 1913. 1905, 61, 1935, 1966, and that looks like a 1951, I think. Ah, oh, no, it's a 1935. Well, that's it. At last, we've done it. There's the one cent from Canada, 1943, right down that corner. I've got the um, other South African penny there, and this 1888, oh look at that, and it fills a bingo line up right at the end. A few gaps this time, especially the older Victorian ones, but then I was filling up my albums as, as well in this hunt, and the usual suspects, the KNs, the 50 and the 51. 
So now I'll sort out the foreign and the territory ones. The Irish ones are all different dates, 1928, 33, 35, 37, 42, 49, 65 and 1966. And the French ones, 1854, 55 and 56, we've got 1888, 1891, 1907 and 1916. And the Jersey ones, there's a 1933, there's the two 1945s, Elizabeth II and George VI. Uh, there's a 1960, 1964 and a 1966. Lots of different halfpennies there, I'm not going to go through all the dates again. If you're watching, you'll know what they are. And the same with the farthings, quite a few different dates there. The Australian pennies, 1936, 1950, 51 and 1964. There's an Australian halfpenny and an Irish halfpenny. What was the date on the Irish one? 1953. And there's the Spanish, what was that one called? Ten Centimos, I think. Yeah, Ten Centimos. Um, there's the token, the one cent from Canada, and this 1806 George III halfpenny. I nearly forgot these four. The two pennies from South Africa, the Tui bird from New Zealand, and this 1891 from Portugal. And that was 20 roos. Right, that is definitely all of them. And there we go, one person can get that. So one more reminder what you've got to do. This is number eight, this is the last video in the series. So what you've got to do is comment on all the videos. And then in two weeks, I always leave it for two weeks. So it's May the 31st today. So two weeks from today, I'll make another video. And then I will pick one of the videos at random on the wheel, Wheel of Fortune. Then I will pick a comment from that video with the YouTube random comment picker and the person that made that comment will get all this lot. Okay, there we are then. If you want to help me out, you can always uh, click up there, buy me a beer. You can watch my videos. That's a good one. And if you want to, you can even subscribe. Thank you very much. See you in the next one.